to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. We thank God for this open door this morning to come and to praise Him and to worship Him. Can we all stand this morning? I just want to invite our guests this morning, Raj and Anne. It's so good to have you out here this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. We serve one God and His name is Jesus. Amen. Thank you for fellowshipping with us this morning. What a beautiful teaching this morning on worship. Hallelujah. Some of the songs I've selected this morning is just goes with the, uh, Brother Hallett's teaching this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to invite the presence of the Lord and uh, we're going to sing that song that Brother Hallett sang, Touching Jesus. That's all that matters. Hallelujah. Touching Jesus.
book of Psalms says that everything I bring praise him.
Praise God. I appreciate the presence of the Lord that I feel in this place. Amen. I love it. When we worship Him, and when we worship Him, the praises go up, the blessings come down. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you want to turn in your Bibles with me, we're going to turn to Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 4 to 9. Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 4 to 9. And uh, as Brother Play has already said, it's very good to have our friends from London here. Well, the friends now, uh, Sister Annie and Brother Raj. Praise God. Praise God. Ezekiel chapter 3, and of course, it's good to have all of you here. Thank you for being in church today. Praise God. There's many places that you could be, but you want to be in the presence of God. That is something to be celebrated. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 4 to 9. Uh, Brother Dylan, I do have a little sermon graphic if you want to put it up after the verses. But it reads this. Then he said to me, that's the Lord speaking to Ezekiel, Son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak with my words to them. For you are not sent to a people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language, whose words you cannot understand. Surely, had I sent you to them, they would have listened. But the house of Israel will not listen to you, because they will not listen to me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Behold, this is what I told Ezekiel, I have made your face strong against their faces, and your forehead strong against their foreheads, like adamant stone. Like a diamond, okay? That's what that's talking about there. Like diamond, harder than flint, I have made your forehead. Do not be afraid of them, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they are a rebellious house. Mm -hmm. So, this morning, on a couple days before Valentine's Day, you know, we could be talking about love, but, you know, if you really want to connect it, we're going to talk about diamonds. <laughs> All right? Uh, diamond determination, or the determination of a diamond. Praise God. Let's pray one more time. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for your word. We thank you for how you're going to speak to us, Lord. I just pray that you would anoint my mouth, God, and anoint each one of our ears, Lord Jesus, to hear and to receive, Lord, and make this commitment in our hearts, Lord, that you want us to make today, and we will give you all the praise and all the glory for everything that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'll get to there in just a second, but... How many of you would admit, you can be seated, how many of you would admit that you can be stubborn? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's some hands. You can admit that you're a little bit stubborn. Now, don't look at the family members now. Let's not point fingers. Just raise your own hand. <laughs> I can admit that. I can be stubborn. And I believe it runs in my family. I know Brother Dylan is, may have his own stories, but... Uh, from his side, but in my family, I'd say it runs in the family, and there's so many stories that I could tell you about stubbornness and where it's landed us, but I think it's really well demonstrated in a simple household chore of laundry. Now, who likes to do laundry? <laughs> right, so I, this wasn't, you know, this wasn't as a young child, this was as a teenager, probably, I'm guessing, maybe around 15. I decided, because I had a fascination with what I called the olden days, all right? I wanted everything to go back in time. If I could have got my hands on a scrub board, I would, I would have done that, but I didn't have that. But I decided I was going to hand wash all of my clothes. I was going to, so I, I did it. I did it for several months. I took them all and I washed them in the sink. I think I used like dish detergent or laundry detergent because I didn't, I didn't know what to use. But I would scrub these clothes in the sink. I mean, I, I was going out and also digging in the dirt too. And, I, and I'd be scrubbing these in the sink trying to get these clean. And I would hang them to dry, which of course we always do here. But I had a dryer at the house. But no, I was not going to use the washer and the dryer because I wanted to go back to the olden days. So I did this for quite, I don't remember how long I did it for, but I know it was at least several months. But you know the craziest part about this? Is I was not required to do my own laundry. Mm -hmm. The alternative was my mother doing it for me. Mm -hmm. And yet I chose to hand wash mm -hmm. the clothes. I wasn't the only one that was kind of, you know, peculiar about laundry. My brother was also a little bit peculiar. Now he didn't hand wash his clothes, but... He would go through several outfits a day 
depending on the activity, he would change every single time, especially once he started work, working, which he did around the ages of 15 or 16. And so, you know, he'd have, a, he'd have the night clothes, he'd have the work clothes, he'd come home, he'd have the eating clothes, he'd have the, you know, the whatever. I might be exaggerating a little bit, but he would at least wear several outfits a day. And after each one, he would put that entire outfit in the laundry hamper and not rewear it. And so this would pile up and mom would get after him, please, because mom did all the household laundry. That's how she preferred to do it. And uh, she would get after him, please, please, can you just wear the same outfit of clothes for one whole day or, or re-wear it, you know, set it aside. And we'd constantly get after him and urge him to do this. Now, he got married at 21 years old. And now, of course, his, it was bestowed upon his wife now that she was going to do the laundry. And he kept doing the exact same thing. So she would get after him, please, please, can you please wear less clothes uh, or wear less changes of clothes? And uh, it was a bit of a bone of contention. So finally, she gave him an ultimatum. Either you stop wearing so many clothes in one day or you do all the laundry. He said, not a problem. I will do all the laundry. And to this day, it's about 17 years later, my brother does all the laundry in their house because he was too stubborn to change, that he was so set in his ways that he would not change it. So it's a kind of a silly example, perhaps, you know, talk about laundry. But you see, when someone is truly determined, truly stubborn, let's say, but we'll say determined, it sounds a little better, right? Just say determined. They don't care if it takes them extra time. They don't care if someone comes along and says, well, you know, you could be doing it an easier way. You're making it harder on yourself than you really need to. Other, you know, others may say how crazy, I know my mom told me every single time how crazy I was for hand washing uh, all of my clothes, but it didn't matter because I was determined. Right. It doesn't matter how much more difficult it be or even if there's no end or solution inside and you know laundry is a never ending task. Mm -hmm. But stubborn people will stick to it no matter what. Sure. That's what it means to be stubborn. I'm doing it this way and I am not changing. Amen. Now, <laughs> let me bring you back to Ezekiel. Okay, how in the world are we going to connect laundry and Ezekiel? <laughs> Ezekiel was the son of a priest and a prophet who ministered to Judah during a crazy time in their history, before and even after they went into Babylonian captivity. And he ministered to a very stubborn people. The word of God says that. Ezekiel 2 and 4, the Lord said they are obstinate and stubborn children. That was the people of Israel, and they were. Because God sent them prophet after prophet to warn them, turn from your wicked ways. Turn and worship the one true God. And, and, and I will deliver you, and I will keep you, and I will bless you. But if you're continuing in your stubborn ways, there will be consequences to your actions, please. So they pled with them. They warned them, all of these things. And what did Israel do, or Judah do? They ignored them. They imprisoned them. They ridiculed them. And in many circumstances, some circumstances, they even killed them. Right up until the point they kept being stubborn, right up until the point that they were captured and taken away into Babylonian ex exile, Ezekiel, the prophet, along with them. Frequently, the Bible warns of the dangers of stubbornness. A really big example of this is in 1 Samuel 15 and 23. And I'm reading from a, I think it's the NLT translation, I think. Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. Amen. That's right. Okay, we know about idolatry, right? Mm -hmm. We know that that's, that's, a, that's against the first commandment right there. We know that that's a big deal. We know witchcraft. You know, we don't want any part of that, of any kind of devil worship or anything like that. We don't want to be involved with that. We distance ourselves from that. But rebellion and stubbornness is just as bad. Mm -hmm. There's no difference in the eyes of God. And in fact, they have their root in the very same attitude. Mm -hmm. Rebellion and stubbornness is the root of those things. Mm -hmm. When the Bible talks about stubbornness, the word that's translated, it's, it's more than just determined. It's, it specifically refers to a backsliding condition. Right. So there is a, it's not talking about good stubbornness there. There is a sort of good stubbornness. But there are many examples that are used. Pharaoh... He hardened his heart, you know, time after time. He was stubborn because God kept doing plague after plague after plague. I think, is, is that what the children learned about this morning? The plague after plague after plague, and Pharaoh kept saying, no, 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 I will not listen. 
Romans 2 and 5 says, because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself. So we must be very careful not to be stubborn in our ways to the point of disobedience against God. Because there's times when we may have a way of doing things or a way of thinking, and God is trying to speak to us. God is trying to change our mind. God is trying to show us what his word says. And we got our stubborn face on. We're determined. And we must be very careful not to do that. So you see the people that Ezekiel were sent to, they were very stubborn. But we've got that foundation laid. But so was Ezekiel. To a stubborn people, you need a stubborn prophet. Or we'll say determined. Again, determined sounds a little bit better. A determined prophet. His name means strengthened by God. And look at what God had told him. We read it. I've made your face strong against their faces. And your forehead strong against their foreheads. Oh yes, they're, they're stubborn. They're stubborn in their pride. But I've made you stubborn in proclaiming my word. Yeah, they're set in their wicked ways, but you're going to be set in your message of truth that you are proclaiming. They might be determined that they're going to disobey me, but I've made you determined to obey me. You see, often the traits in our lives that, that, you know, they can be negative, but God can take those traits and use them for good. Ezekiel was stubborn. That could have ended badly if he was not surrendered to the Lord. It, uh, Peter was very impulsive, and he would speak whatever came into his mind, but God used that boldness and allowed it to be used for his kingdom. So there's two sides to the stone. But look at verse, uh, look at verse 9. Like adamant stone, harder than flint, I have made your forehead. The people of Judah were compared to flint. Flint is a hard, sharp stone, and they often the same word would used to be referred to a knife. Um, so you see, it in itself was something very strong. You think of a rock, you think of strong. You know that that's what we think. They were stubborn, they were hard-hearted, and their words cut. But God had made Ezekiel adamant. In comparison to the flint or the rock. Of Ju that Judah were in their stubbornness, Ezekiel was like the diamond, mm -hmm. the adamant stone. And, and we get our word adamant from the Greek word ad uh, adamus, which means diamond or invincible or indestructible. A diamond, you know, a diamond, it's harder than any rock. Mm -hmm. It's 10 on the scale. Of the they actually have a Mohs scale of hardness. A diamond is number 10. Ezekiel was more determined to obey than they were to disobey. Mm -hmm. Their, stubborn would not, their stubbornness would not break Ezekiel. Their words would not wound him. The pressure would not destroy him. Because Ezekiel was like a diamond in his determination. And we see this in his life and ministry. This is what God told him, but this is what it played out to look like. Because God asked some really hard things from him, and he faced some really difficult opposition. Just to give you an idea, I mean, the prophets, they did all kinds of crazy things as the Lord directed them. The Lord liked to use his, his prophets as object lessons in and of themselves. And he did that with Ezekiel. Amen. Often his personal life was an illustration of what would happen to Judah if they did not repent. For 390 days, he was commanded to lay on his side. Um, so many days were on one side, so many days were on the other side, representing different things. But the Lord said, you're not going to be, un you're going to be unable to move. I'm going to keep you in spot. So you're going to lay on your side and you're not going to be able to roll over. You're going to lay on that, slot, on that side. And during this time, Ezekiel was to eat only bread, made of wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and spelt. It was the, the bread that was eaten under dire conditions. When you didn't have all of the normal supplies that you would have, it was, it was the poor man's bread, if I can say it that way. And he ate it, or he baked it before these 390 days. He baked it using animal dung as fuel. And then this was the bread that he had to eat for 390 days. Nothing else, only that. I don't want to be, I wouldn't want to be Ezekiel. He removed his hair and was commanded to subject it to the various fates that Judah would face, burning, sword, and scattering. Ezekiel must have looked like a crazy man, I tell you. Chopping off all his hair and then taking it and dividing it carefully into thirds. And I'm going to burn this part and this part I'm going to hack up with the sword. And this part I'm going to spread it into the, wing, with the winds. Ezekiel must have looked absolutely insane. But the worst part of Ezekiel's life was when his wife died in a plague, symbolizing the temple's destruction. And Ezekiel 
was not allowed to mourn. Some of you know what loss is life, like, and you know what a weight that is, but Ezekiel, he wasn't allowed to show it at all. He wasn't allowed to shed a tear. He wasn't allowed to put on the mourning clothes. He wasn't allowed to hold a funeral, so to speak. He had to go about his normal, everyday routine to exemplify to the people how they would not be able to console each other once God's judgment fell. And he did this out of obedience to the word of the Lord and so that his people might see. Ezekiel did not have it easy. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. But I tell you what, Ezekiel had to be determined mm -hmm. to stick through it all and continue proclaiming God's word. Mm -hmm. Continue being faithful when despite all of this, all the hardships and all the things that Ezekiel had went through, the people didn't even listen. I think that's the worst part about it. He did all these things. He sacrificed. He, he lived his life in complete and utter surrender to the Lord, even though the Lord asked him hard things and nobody even listened to him. It was. It must have felt, I'm sure, like it was in vain. That's how I would feel. I did all this and, and nothing happened. They stubborned themselves right into captivity. But today's message is not about Judah's stubbornness. It's about Ezekiel's. Right. Because Ezekiel had his mind made up. Mm -hmm. If I can say it this way, they're going to be stubborn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be more stubborn. Right. I'm going to be yeah. more determined. Right. I'm going to stick to this even if nobody else does. Even if I have to go through these hard trials, I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to be like the diamond. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Ezekiel was, like I said, he was told from the start that they would not listen. But as I reflect on this story, I do have to, you know, take a moment and realize and mention that we have a better promise than Ezekiel does. Because Ezekiel told right off the bat, doesn't matter what you do, they're not going to listen. But we have a promise that I will pour out my spirit, says the Lord, on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. You see, the gospel will be preached in every corner of the world. There will be a harvest. There is a harvest. There's a harvest in the city of Edinburgh. There is a work that God is doing in this last day. Sometimes we look and we can focus on the stubbornness of people. And there will be people that will hear and reject it. But can I say that their God will have a people in this day and age and in this place. And God, there will be some that will, that will come out of the stubbornness of their heart and accept the message of how God loves them and wants to save them. Yes. But will we let the opposition that we face discourage us? Because sometimes it's way too easy to focus on that. Or will we have Ezekiel's determination and say, I'm not going to let anything stop me from doing God's will. Amen. Nothing is going to stop me. I shall not be moved. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So how do you become determined like a diamond? How do you become more stubborn than a rock? Like I mentioned, diamonds are the hardest natural occurring substance. They are formed under extreme pressure and temperature. In fact, they are often used in various industries because of their incredible strength. You want to engrave on, some, on something, you use a diamond point for that. They're nearly indestructible. They're hard to break, crush, or damage. The only thing that can scratch a diamond is another diamond. There's, there's maybe some messages and sermons in there, praise God. But we need this kind of strength and determination in our walk with God. Right. See, the Lord had this kind of determination in his life. When he walked on this earth as Jesus Christ, and on his way to the cross, he said, I have set my face like flint. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm stubborn like a rock. That's right. He would not be deterred. The devil came and offered him temptation. Mm -hmm. Well, if you do this, everyone will know that you are God. They will bow down and worship him if you'll just do this. Or if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. Mm -hmm. But no, he was determined. Mm -hmm. There were shortcuts offered because the people said, well, we're going to come. We'll, we'll make you king right here, right now. We'll crown you right now. And he had to walk away from those scenarios. Because he was determined. He knew where the Lord was. Well, he knew where he was going. And he knew what he had to do, what he had come to do, which was to die for our sins. He was not deterred when he suffered in the Garden of Gethsemane and he sweat great drops of sweat as though it were blood. And when they beat him and when they ridiculed him and when they put him on a cross, 
he was determined. That could not sway him. That could not turn him around. Charles Spurgeon said it like this in one of his messages. My great object is to lead you to love him who so loved you that he set his face like a flint in his determination to save you. O oh, ye redeemed ones, on whose behalf the strong resolve was made, ye who have been bought by the precious blood of this steadfast, resolute redeemer. Come and think a while of him that your hearts may burn within you and that your faces may be set like flints to live and die for him who lived and died for you. We need a little bit of the determination that Jesus had, that Ezekiel had, that said, no matter what, I am going to fulfill God's will for my life. I am not going to be turned around by anyone or anything or whatever may come my way. I am determined to stand fast. And this is kind of the, the, the positive equivalent of, of stubbornness. You know, you see in the Bible, usually stubborn is bad. But you see words like hold fast or stand fast, that's the positive side of it. First Thessalonians 5 and 21 says, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. First Thessalonians 2, or 2 Thessalonians, I believe, 2.15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. And hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by epistle. We need to be standing fast. We need to be determined, stubborn in our walk with God. Oh, yes, others may be stubborn in their disobedience and in the ways of the world, but they're stubborn like rock. I'm stubborn like a diamond. <laughs> no matter how stubborn, I am going to be more stubborn. We, we have a song that we like around here, Brother Pelé. It's uh, Bambalela. <laughs> and we know what that means because we sing the English version of it. Hold on to Jesus. Amen. And we sing that and we dance around. But you know what? The true test of whether we believe that song is not how much we dance to it, but whether we go home and we hold on. <laughs> because holding on to Jesus isn't what happens on a Sunday. It's what happens on the whole other six days of the week when times get a little bit harder. Are we going to yes, Are we going to hold on? to Jesus when we don't have the church singing and dancing and worshiping are we still going to hold on are we going to be stubborn and resolute and determined in our walk with God we must hold on even through the most difficult times and circumstances if you're going to be stubborn be stubborn for the Lord and not against him praise God this year's uh, the you know this has kind of been going through my mind of the first message I preached this year and Kind of set it as a theme, being rooted. Tell you what, if you're going to be rooted in the house of God and the things of God, it's going to take some stubbornness. It's going to take some determination. It's going to take some commitment. You see, when I told you my laundry stories, a bit of a silly example that demonstrated me and my family's stubbornness over something silly, I said, when someone is truly determined, they don't care how much extra time it takes. They don't care if someone offers them an easier way out. They don't care how crazy it might seem to those around them or might make them look. They don't, they don't care how much more difficult it might be or even if there is no end or solution in sight. A determined person or a stubborn person will stick to it no matter what. If you can do that in your natural, because I know some of you, you're stubborn about some things in your life. I can say that because I'm the same. You know, there's some ways that you like it this way or no other way. That's right, man. If you can apply that to your walk with God, yeah. that is where it really matters. Yes. That is where we really need to be determined and to hold on yeah. to yeah. Jesus. Yeah. If we can be like Ezekiel in the middle of a stubborn world, Say, I'm going to be more stubborn in my walk with God than they are in their sin and wickedness. I'm going to stand as that lighthouse and that beacon no matter what. Can you stand with me? Is your mind made up this morning? Are you going to be stubborn or determined? Let's use the word determined. Determined like a diamond. It doesn't matter if no one listens. Doesn't matter if others think I'm crazy. Doesn't matter if I don't like it sometimes where God leads me. It doesn't matter if I stand out like a diamond among rocks. It doesn't matter if it is inconvenient. 
It doesn't matter if it requires more strength than I feel that I have, because God can strengthen you. It doesn't matter if it is uncomfortable. It doesn't matter what trial or difficulty I face. It doesn't matter what my emotions are telling me. It doesn't matter if no one else around me is giving it 100% and I feel like I am the only one. We need to have in our mind, I am going to be like a diamond. Is the world stubborn? I'll be more so. Is the devil determined to bring me down? I'm going to be more determined to stay the course. Is my circumstance seem stubborn? I'm going to be more stubborn because I'm going through it. No child's going to bring me down. No devil's going to turn me around. And no world is going to dull my flame. I will be more determined than any of those things. So let's come to the altar today and make that commitment. It needs to be 100% settled in your mind today. Not as an emotion. Not as a thing, oh, I feel the presence of God. I'm going to be determined. But as a fact in your mind that no matter what, no matter what happens, no matter what comes my way, Lord, I pray that you would give me that resolve down deep in my heart that though the things around me and the people around me and the enemies I face are stubborn, I pray that the same could be said of me as was said of Ezekiel and was even said of Jesus, that I have set my face like a flint. I'm like a diamond in my determination. I'm going to be stubborn when it comes to the things of God. I'm going to be determined to walk this course and to fulfill the word, will of God in my life. If we could pray that, if we could make that commitment here, today. Lord, I'm determined. Lord, no matter what, I'm not going to turn around. There's nothing that anybody can say. I'm not going to be offended. There's no trial that's going to tear me away from the house of God. I'm not going to run away from this, Lord. But Jesus, I am determined, Lord, that I am on Lord, and that I will do your will, Lord, and I will speak your word, Jesus, no matter what, Lord. No matter what it costs, Lord, I'm in 100%, God. I am in 100%, Lord. There is no 
Sister Cassandra, if you want to come and speak to the ladies, then we'll take up the offering. 